The Lord be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be joyce. Jack, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to you all for uh, Church at Four. A few notices before we start, just to say that uh, this is going to be the last Church at Four until September. We will review it over the summer. Um, it's just with, with all the occasional offices, with all the baptisms on Sunday, um, trying to get a, a church at four out every day as well with everything that's happening in the evenings uh, is going to be more complicated. So we've decided to have a little break um, and to see where that leads us for church at four in September. So again, thoughts and ideas, always welcome. We'll continue with our morning prayer Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that will carry on as normal. But please do, if you are a regular user at Church at Four, please do let us know what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, I'm guessing you'll miss it if, it, if you're a regular, but uh, but do let us know which are the bits that, that really work for you. So always good to have feedback. Um, also, a couple of extra notices. Firstly, there is no Just Be this week. If you're looking at the welcome, there's no Just Be this week. The next one is the 14th of July. Um, the Flower Festival at St Evel is still going on today uh, and we have our Songs of Praise final service this evening at six. So do come along to that if you'd like. Um, and on Tuesday evening, Margaret Miles is being licensed as a worship leader in our benefice. Um, so again, uh, if you'd like to be part of that, do email either myself or the benefice office and we'll send you the link. It's going to be done on Zoom. So again, you don't have to leave the comforts of your own home to do that. And again, all the other notices are in the welcome, which I've attached to the uh, to the feed today. So without further ado, let's have our first hymn this afternoon. To God be the glory. Oh, 
we're using the order of service which I've also attached for you and let's begin with our opening prayer. So Creator God as we gather together today we pray that you will fill our hearts, our minds and our souls. Transform us Lord and make us more like you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we continue in prayer as we lay before God the week past, the things we shouldn't have said or done, and those things that we wish we had. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you, and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and say and think. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son, save us and help us. May almighty God, who sent his son into the world to save sinners, bring pardon and peace now and forever Amen. Bless the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. So I'm going to read for you our first reading this afternoon, and this is from... Kings. It's from the uh, first book of Kings, uh, beginning uh, in chapter 19 at verse 15. Then the Lord said to him, and he's talking about Elijah here, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you should anoint Hazal as king over Aram, then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. So, <coughs> excuse me, Elijah set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was ploughing. There were twelve yoke of oxen ahead of him and he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and mother and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, go back again for what I have done to you. He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. I'm going to play you, before we read our second reading, another hymn, Beautiful Saviour.
this afternoon is from Luke's Gospel chapter 9 beginning at verse 51. When the days drew near for him to be taken up he set his face to go to Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him but they did not receive him because his face was set to Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds, have the air, birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first I must go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the bed, dead bury their own. For as you go, for as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say goodbye to those as my, at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. 
So may I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I've read that uh, Teresa, St. Teresa of Avila, spent many years travelling on God's business, founding and reforming convents. But the journey she, were on, she was on were unsafe and uncomfortable, um, back obviously in the time that she lived, no first class travel back then. But she was never daunted and one day, when she was near the end of her tether with weariness, her carriage had broken and she'd fallen out into the mud, she is reported to have shouted at God, no wonder you have so few friends when you treat them so badly. And you know, I think Elijah was in that frame of mind in today's reading. And he, I think, expresses himself in a similar way. You've got to remember what he's been through. And we hear all about that in Kings 17 and 18, the two chapters before that. It's the great story of all the tasks that God asks Elijah to do and all the trust that Elijah puts in God to carry them out. Elijah has been saved through a drought. He's been raised from the dead. He's confronted kings and he's killed the priests of Baal and God has even sent fire and rain at his request. But none of this has had any effect. The king still hates him and prefers to worship his wife Jezebel's gods and Jezebel, the wife, has sworn to get her revenge for what Elijah did to her priests. So Elijah is pretty fed up. He walks away from the struggle into the wilderness and asks God if he can die. He doesn't want to fight anymore. He doesn't want to do the hard and thankless things that God has called him to, which in his view have no effect, except it feels to endanger his own life. And he no longer wants to be God's prophet, since God clearly does not know how to treat his friends. But you know, God isn't leaving him alone. He's sending angels to pester him with food and drink. And so Elijah grumpily carries on his journey up the holy mountain of Horeb. But, you know, nothing's going to make Elijah forget his grievance. And God, to be fair, doesn't try to argue with Elijah or try to defend himself. Instead, he comes to meet Elijah on the holy mountain. And although Elijah is angry and weary, he still recognises God and he knows that the wind and the earthquakes and the fire are just sound effects. He knows that it is only in the silence that he can truly meet God and it is in this silence that he stomps out to be with God. Yet even now he is not overawed by God can almost hear him in a monotone voice as he lays out his sense of failure, despair and his resentment of God. And God, who can command drought and fire and earthquake and storms, prefers silence. And it's in this silence that he hears his friend Elijah and he allows Elijah to resign, to step back. And he accepts that Elijah has laid all these things against him and he releases him. Elijah does not have to carry on with this dangerous and remit unremitting work. He can pass it all on to Elisha. But you know, Elijah can't really believe it. And when he finds Elisha and passes on his mantle, he still believes that this younger man is going to back out. He still believes that when Elisha says, I'm just going to go and say goodbye to my parents, that you can hear the tiredness and the disbelief in Elijah's voice when he said, all right, yeah, OK, you'll come back. Not. He really doesn't believe that God is going to let him go. But as we find out, he has misjudged Elisha, who takes on this new role and he shows his new role by representing his own life, his old life, by killing the oxen, boiling them up, using his equipment to make a fire and feeding those who he is leaving behind. And then with wholehearted conviction, he takes up Elijah's mantle. 
And there's something very moving, I think, between God and Elijah in this story. The work isn't done, but God recognises Elijah's need. And all through the story, God has taken care of Elijah. He's fed him, he's worked miracles at his request. But now he says, can't you trust me? Sorry, now he doesn't say, at the very end of all this, he doesn't say to Elijah, after all I've done for you, can't you trust me? Instead, he just comes to his old friend in great kindness and great love and gives in to him, allows him to stand back. It is a lovely story of a friendship, a tough friendship, but there it is. Two, two chapters of Kings all rolled into a five minute uh, sermon. But then let's look at Luke's reading because there's no such relief for Jesus. And yet Jesus, I guess, doesn't ask to be let off. He sort of comes close in the Garden of Gethsemane, but he accepts you know, that he has to have the strength for it to be God's choice and not his own. And yet in this reading, it's great, isn't it, that as soon as somebody does something that, that Jesus has asked and they say no, what is it the disciples want to do? They want to start playing with fire and pyrotechnics and send down all these punishments on people that stand against Jesus just like Elijah was able when he called these things down on his enemies. But in this case, Jesus forbids it. Jesus rejects any part of that and allows the inevitable to happen. In fact, Jesus's words, I think, were a little bit harsher than Elijah. You know, Elijah, out of gloom and despair, when, uh, when he wants to give up, it's almost a, oh, go on then. But Jesus, Jesus isn't quite so gentle, which those that question. Jesus, I think, hears the ignorance and the insincerity in those voices that are making excuses. Whereas Jesus, who has set his face to Jerusalem, is nearly in the same position of aloneness as he will be when he is on the cross. There is a harshness in these decisions. But you know, Elijah, Jesus and St. Teresa, they've all led lives centred on God. Following God for all of them doesn't by any stretch of the imagination mean that they have had it easy. Having God as a friend doesn't mean that they can sit back and enjoy the easy life. In fact, quite the opposite. With God as a friend, life can be dangerous and lonely at times. And you can be hated and unpopular with those around you. Do you know, this week I've had the privilege of being a chaplain on the ordination retreat. Uh, Twelve ordinands and deacons all preparing for being deacons and priests. We're in a week of silence, just coming to the end before they went to the cathedral on Friday and Saturday uh, to be ordained by our bishop. And you know, it's not something to be taken lightly. Committing your life to God is a massive decision, as Jesus has pointed out to these people who thought they could follow him. Following Christ means making tough decisions, and many of us have had to give up things and sacrifice things to follow our calling. But what about when we don't want to fight anymore? What about when we don't want to do the hard and thankless things that God has called us to and which feel like they have no effect anyway at times? What do we do then? There are times in church life when it feels just like that, when it feels as though it really isn't worth it and you just want to throw in the towel. It's then, I think, that God does find us. God is there, maybe not in earthquakes and fire, maybe just in silence, maybe just 
in our day-to-day -day tasks. But God does not leave us alone. God is still trying to reach us. And if we have taken time to know God through prayer, through worship and through fellowship, well, we'll know that it is most definitely God who is still with us and on our side. St. Teresa didn't walk away from God after she salt, uh, insulted and walked away from him. But God also didn't leave Teresa, Teresa's side after she said all those things. Elijah didn't give up on God, he didn't wash his hands of God, God's mission. He just became Elisha's teacher and Elisha became his servant. The next phase began. And Jesus, well, Jesus knew how hard the path was to follow him and the sacrifices that would be need, would need to be made to truly do what he was being asked to do. So he wasn't being mean when he pointed these things out to those who thought in their enthusiasm and in their ignorance that they could follow in the path of Jesus, that they just thought it might be as easy as a walk in the park. And I think it's the same for our new deacons and priests across the diocese. And it's the same for us in Lamb Pied Our Benefice, trying to be the Church of Christ in our communities, being a Christian, following Christ, because it's not a walk in the park. There will be times when we will think, what's the point? I can't see any purpose. And there will be times when it feels like God is a million miles away from us. But, you know, deep down and through faith, we will know and recognise, just as Elijah did, that God is always with us. So we continue to the next phase of God's journey together, whatever that may look like. But let us always remember, first and foremost, that God is always there with us. Amen. So let us declare our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. And our response, if you have your welcome with you, is when I say we ask in Jesus' name, your response is give us grace to discern your answer. So please do join in at home if you would like to. When we are called to follow Jesus, that means total commitment, no half measures. Holy God, you have called us to meet and pray together, and wherever we are, we gather here in your name. And we pray at this time for those who are called to lay and ordained ministry in your church, for those at present testing their vocation. And we lay before you the work that needs doing here in Lampida, and we ask for you to provide people to do that. Willing, enthusiastic people coming to faith in your son, Jesus Christ. And we give thanks for the work across the benefice, for the many rich conversations that I have with people day to day, for those who are tired and can do no more, and for those who want to do and be part of what is going to happen. We ask in Jesus' name, give us grace to discern your answer. And we pray for all those called to serve you in positions of authority and influence, for all leaders to see great goodness in all service and true strength with humility. We ask this in Jesus' name. 
give us grace to discern your answer. And we pray for all relationships, for new relationships of marriages, for long relationships of service in our churches and in our communities, for new relationships with young children. We pray that whenever our paths cross, a relationship is formed in your name. We ask in Jesus' name, give us grace to discern your answer. And we pray for those whose lives are full of disappointment, disillusion and discontent. For all who struggle with great perseverance in difficult circumstances. We pray for your strength encouragement and your direction. We ask in Jesus' name, give us grace to discern your answer. And we pray for those called through death into eternal life and, free and freedom from all their pain and suffering. Receive them with mercy and welcome them into your kingdom. We especially remember at this time Elizabeth El Olivia Bolton. We ask in Jesus' name, give us grace to discern your answer. And we thank you, Holy God, for your promise that where two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant our requests. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Yeah. Hey. 
our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you all always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So I will see you during the week, no doubt. I will be doing morning prayer tomorrow morning at St Enida, but I won't be going to Marks and Spencers because we have a funeral in St Morgan tomorrow. We're back for morning prayer on Tuesday, communion on Wednesday, uh, which whoever's doing it, probably me actually on Tuesday, I'll remind you about that. Uh, but this evening as well, although there's the Flower Festival Songs of Praise, in St Colin, Margaret is starting our summer meditations. Uh, at six o'clock and a great opportunity um, to just go along and, and spend a bit of time in quiet and celebrate the joys of summer. Um, I would be there if I wasn't leading the songs of praise so I hope whoever does go you have a wonderful time and I shall see you all uh, during the week. Take care and God bless.